What's happening beneath Naples right now was never supposed to be possible. In the last few weeks, residents inside the Campi Flegre Caldera have begun noticing something terrifying. Floors warming from below, asphalt radiating heat, walls sweating with blistering plaster, places that should be cold stone, now feel like someone has turned on an oven beneath the city. And according to thermal scans, some of these hot spots are hot enough to deform household materials. This is not normal. And scientists say this sudden spread of heat is the most alarming development Campi Flegre has shown in modern history. But what changed beneath Naples, and why now? Eyewitnesses across Puzzuoli, Agnano, and the Solfatara region began reporting the same haunting detail. Their homes were warming from the inside out. Not from heaters, not from weather, but from the ground itself. Some describe ceramic tiles softening. Others say their basements feel like industrial furnaces. Parents are moving their children's bedrooms to cooler hallways. Independent thermal cameras confirm the fear strips of city pavement are glowing on heat maps as though invisible fires are burning beneath the surface. Authorities tried calming residents by blaming Bradyism, the natural rising and sinking cycle Campi Flegrai is known for. But this isn't Bradyism anymore. The heat is too strong, the spread is too fast, and the pattern is completely new. So what is pushing this heat upward? To understand what's happening, you first need to know what lies beneath Naples. Campi Flegre is not a single volcano like Vesuvius. It's a 15-kilometer wide underground system, a massive volcanic bowl created by two prehistoric eruptions so violent they reshaped southern Italy. The first, around 39,000 years ago, covered much of Europe in ash. The second, around 15,000 years ago, left behind the giant depression three million people now call home. For centuries, the system has simmered, not slept, slowly collecting heat, gas, and pressure. And over the last two decades, that simmer has begun to accelerate. But in the past year, something shifted dramatically. Satellite radar shows Campi Flegre has been slowly rising since 2005. But recently, that uplift has tripled. Entire blocks of Puzzuoli now sit noticeably higher than before. Old docks that once touched the sea now hover above the waterline like props from a forgotten age. And each rise in the ground brings something else with it. Earthquakes. More than 50,000 small quakes in the last few years. Each one a fracture, opening microscopic pathways through the crust. Scientists call them chimneys. Cracks that let heat and gas escape. And every new chimney thins the lid that keeps the magma system contained. That thinning might be the most dangerous development of all. Because once the lid weakens, pressure finds a way out. Over the last month, gas emissions across the caldera have changed in both strength and chemistry. Vents that were once warm, now jet-scalding steam. Sensors detect hydrochloric acid, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide drifting straight into neighborhoods. Metal handrails corrode overnight. Pets vomit from the fumes. People wake up with burning eyes and irritated lungs. Then came the discovery that changed everything. Passive infrared scanners, normally used to detect heat leaks in buildings, now show glowing patches on sidewalks, courtyards, and driveways. Heat isn't just rising in volcanic vents, it's rising through the city. And that should never happen. Heat at the surface means something deeper has changed. Under any volcano, magma is kept in check by solid rock above it, a thick barrier that traps pressure. But when that barrier cracks, pressure is no longer confined. Gases trapped inside the magma begin to escape upward. As those gases leave, the remaining magma becomes lighter, more buoyant, and starts to rise faster. It's the classic pattern before an eruption. Scientists compare what they're seeing now to the 1538 eruption that created Monte Nuovo. When weeks of quakes ended with sudden ground heating, violent steam blasts, and the birth of a volcanic cone in just seven days. But Monte Nuovo was tiny compared to what Campi Flegre is capable of. This time, the system seems larger, hotter, more pressurized, and beneath a modern city. So what happens if the lid fails today? If Campi Flegre ruptures, the earliest signs would likely be freedomagmatic explosions, when groundwater hits rising heat and flashes into superheated steam. The result is violent. The crust shatters. A column of ash blasts into the sky. Shock waves ripple through the city, then come the pyroclastic surges, fast-moving clouds of gas, ash, and debris hotter than 400 degrees Celsius. They move at hurricane speeds, flattening buildings and engulfing anything in their path within seconds. Beyond the immediate blast zone, 
Ashfall could reach the airport, major highways, and even parts of Europe depending on wind direction. And Naples, built like a natural amphitheater, would funnel and echo the shockwaves between ridges. The destruction wouldn't just be physical, it would cripple transportation, power, and communication instantly. But the biggest danger isn't the eruption itself, it's what happens in the minutes before it. The Italian Civil Protection Agency has already raised alert levels twice this year. Maps show red and yellow zones outlining tens of thousands of people who might have only minutes to get out. Schools practice evacuation drills, hospitals rehearse patient transfers, buses sit ready for emergency transport. But Naples is an ancient city. Many streets are narrow, twisting, and easily blocked. There are limited outbound highways. And if an eruption begins, ash clouds or lava fountains could cut off escape routes exactly when they are needed most. Evacuation, even with perfect planning, would be chaotic. And then scientists look deeper, literally. Teams using muon tomography, a technique that tracks cosmic particles passing through rock, discovered low-density zones only a few hundred meters below the surface. These pockets suggest rising magma or gas-filled cavities. Another team measuring electrical resistivity found fresh pathways funneling heat and vapor directly beneath Solfatara. Every method, seismic, chemical, thermal, and imaging, points toward the same conclusion. Campi Flegre is critically pressurized, and its crust is losing integrity. While scientists debate exact thresholds, residents don't need instruments to know something is wrong. They feel it. In kitchens, bread rises too quickly. Tap water comes out warm even without a heater. Soccer fields feel soft underfoot, almost spongy, as if the earth is breathing. Some older residents say the quakes sound different now. Deeper, more resonant, like a giant animal shifting beneath the ground. A fisherman in Puzzuoli keeps a suitcase packed by the door at all times. Real estate values in high-risk zones have collapsed. Insurance companies refuse new policies. Local cafes are quieter, conversations drift toward evacuation routes, shelters, and what keepsakes people would save. Everyday life continues, but with a shadow hanging over it. And the next scenario scientists fear is even more complicated. Campi Flegre might not erupt from a single location. Because the crust is cracking in many places simultaneously, some models show multiple vents opening at once. Imagine ash plumes rising from several streets or lava fountains cutting across different neighborhoods. Highways could be severed, rail lines blocked, evacuation corridors cut off within minutes. In this scenario, emergency planners don't face one eruption. They face several, each unpredictable, each capable of isolating entire districts. This is the nightmare scenario, one that emergency teams train for but hope they never face. So how close is the system to failure? Pressure underground is rising. Heat at the surface is spreading. Gas emissions are intensifying. And the crust is cracking faster than before. Geology has a simple rule. Pressure always finds a release. Either Campi Flegre stalls and cools, a scenario scientists say is becoming less likely, or it breaks through. And with every warm basement, every glowing sidewalk, every sulfurous breath escaping from a new fracture, that breakthrough edge is closer. For the millions living above this restless giant, the question is no longer if, but when. And the most dangerous signal, the one scientists fear most, hasn't happened yet. If you've made it this far, I'm curious. Do you think Campi Flegre is heading toward a small eruption or something far bigger? Tell me your take in the comments.